Hello and welcome to something a little bit different. As you can see, we are not in Unity, we are in Pico 8. So for those of you that are new to this channel or do not already know, I am pretty much exclusively a Unity developer, for lack of a better word. I wouldn't call myself a developer because really I just mess around. But that is all I've played with, other than Basic on a ZX Spectrum when I was 13 and opening Unreal for about 40 seconds and then closing it again. That's pretty much my entire experience. But I've been looking at Pico 8 for probably about a year now and I like the look of it and it's intriguing and I wanted to get it and today I finally got it and uh, I thought it'd be fun to do a little video with Pico 8. So fair warning, this is not a review, this is not a tutorial, this is I've opened Pico and I press record and I don't know what I'm doing next. I've uh, I've got this handy little cheat sheet here and that's basically all I've got going for me. I haven't looked up any tutorials, I haven't done anything that might help me figure out what to do and my aim is I'm going to try and make something in this video. Again, not a tutorial. Tutorial, so I'm not going to be going through it step by step. I'm just going to try and cut it together in a way that's not painful to watch. And um, yeah, I'm going to see what I can do using just this sheet. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. That lasted long. I immediately had to Google something because uh, I didn't know how to get into the editor. So yeah, you press escape to get into the editor as it turns out. So this really isn't going well. <laughs> I had to Google some more stuff. Yeah, so this is apparently how we get things going here because obviously there's no update function that's put there for you like there is in Unity. In Unity, when you create a script, you immediately get an update and a start function. That doesn't happen here. So yeah, I've got my init function, which is the same as Unity's start function, and I've got my update, which is obviously the same as the update function. And then we also need a draw function apparently, and anything we want to put on the screen is going to have to go in here, I think. Anyone who is watching this who is familiar with Pico, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For everything that I get wrong, I'm sorry. There will be plenty of it. I make no claims to be an expert or know what I'm talking about in Unity. So um, definitely not in this. But yeah, let's. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and make a very straightforward script where I make a little dot move around the screen because that seems to be a nice, easy starting point. For the older people who watch my channel, you might remember things like the Atari and the Spectrum. They had like dual function buttons where you had like a button that was the I key, but it was also a weird character to the, you know, you could use to draw things on computers where it didn't have anything except for characters. It didn't have a graphics mode. Pico has that, which is great, except my keyboard is not a Pico keyboard, if such a thing exists. So I'm having to guess <laughs> which, what? <laughs> right, I need an arrow key and I have no idea. Maybe there's a cheat sheet for that somewhere, but it doesn't seem to be on this one that I'm looking at. So I need a left, oh, oh there it is. Hey, so, so shift and L is the left arrow key. Yep, that face is about right. That's how I feel right now. There it is. So shift R is the right arrow key. So the other problem with the way the function keys are set up, it's not a problem, this is like the whole point of this console is I believe is to sort of emulate older machines and this is how they worked. But one of the problems going from the way I type in Unity and things to doing this is that I, I very rarely use the caps key. If I have to do an all caps word, I usually just press the shift key and hold it down and type. There is no lower case in this editor, everything is uppercase, so you never have to do that, but I keep forgetting and in my head I'm going BTN button needs to be all caps and then I'm just pressing shift and typing and getting a whole mess of symbols that mean absolutely nothing. So U is up. Oh, that one makes sense. Oh, hang on, hang on. R is right. L is left. D is that for Christ's sake. Well, it's a lot easier when you know how letters work. So if I've done this right, running this, which is control R, that's another thing I had to Google because there's no obvious way to run it that I'm aware of without saving it and running it from the command prompt thing. It should put a red dot on the screen and we should be able to move that dot. Whee! I've made my first Pico program. Whoop whoop! And that's the video. Okay, okay, let's try and do something a bit more impressive looking. So this is the sprite editor. I'm not even going to touch the music editor because for one thing, it doesn't appear to be working for me. Probably need to restart my computer for this or something, turn it off and on again, or blow on the software or something. But even if I could get it working, it's not my area. So we're going to make a sprite. Probably, I'm just going to do a ball, to be honest. Let's just make a bouncing ball. It's nice and simple. So the sprite draws from the center. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that'll do. We'll go with that. So, I'm given to believe that changing our pixel to a ball should be as easy as changing this to spre and changing this to zero because this is zero or is it zero one? Huh. Well, let's run it and find out. It's not zero. Okay, so the zero is first. You tell it which sprite and then you tell it where it goes. Okay, so. <laughs> 
p part of the way there. That's the wrong sprite, so I must be one. There we go. And now we can move a ball around. We're getting there. I don't know where we're getting, but we're getting there. Let's try, I don't know, gravity. Okay, so, you know what, actually, let's, let's make it a bit faster. I don't want to be sat watching a ball slowly crawl across the screen, so let's see if this works. Eee. E. Okay, I've done something wrong. I may have misjudged the size of the screen. Or alternatively, I may have forgot to set the gravity. There we go. Straight up and down's a bit dull though. Let's see if we can make it move sideways. Okay, so it's been a while since I've done anything like this, but this should give us some sideways movement. Uh, oh. <laughs> there we go. Kind of. I'm not entirely sure where the screen boundaries are, to be honest. I mean, this is basically the start of Pong. I think if we go in here and we make a new tile, something that red stands out on, go with that. And then if we go here, we've got a map. I have no idea how any of this works. Let's just fill the whole thing. I don't, I don't know if this is right. Okay, so the reason we didn't draw our blue thing is because we need to tell it to draw the blue thing. Which we do with the map command. Which should look like that. Let's try it. Hey! Alright, well I've started with Pong, so I may as well I may as well just see the rest of it out. So let's make a sprite for a paddle. So I didn't want to fill that. So there's my amazing paddle. Yeah, sure. There's a paddle. Right, so as I understand it, these little buttons here, these are flags that you can turn on and off that don't really mean anything until you tell them what they mean. So we're just going to turn this one on. So now we can check that, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. Let's get the paddles moving first and then I'll worry about how to detect the collision. Okay, there's my tiny, tiny paddle. I think we may need to rethink the size of the paddle for this ball. Now you know what, it's extra hard pong. Let's leave it like that. Okay, you can't tell this because uh, obviously you can't see the keyboard, but even though it looks like it's working, I've got my up and my down mixed up. Okay, so now we need to check a sprite. You know what, we're gonna cheat on this. You know what, we shouldn't need this if statement actually. No, we shouldn't need this else if. Yeah, because it's not gonna get, if, if this works, if it doesn't work. Have I got these the wrong way around again? Let's just randomly change them and see if it makes a difference. I'm just going to take a minute and try and figure out what I'm doing wrong here, and then I'll be right back. Okay, and um, we're done. I've uh, figured it all out, and uh, as you can see, it's it's all kind of working now. Everything's great. Okay, yeah, you got me. I, uh, I ripped some code off of the internet. I'll put a link to the program that I've just yanked. Yeah, this, this video is only meant to be a little bit of fun. I don't want to spend ages trying to figure out how to do something on camera when to be honest it's only it's probably not going to be on this channel again i mean unless it's something you're interested in obviously the minecraft and seven days thing will be more important but if you'd like to see more pico stuff i'm probably going to be playing with it quite a lot because this is a fun little thing so i know it's not a proper video but i do want to thank my patrons because i always thank my patrons and everyone anyone who likes and subscribes and shares and leaves comments and joins the discord you're all what's keeping this channel going Going, basically but special thanks obviously to the people who are on patreon i've had a couple more since the last video special thanks as always to the sugar daddy slash mama tier patreons dave maldine gabrielle white julio Mon Ju julio monterio i'm sure you guys are coming up with harder names just to make it hard for me julio is the uh, one of the more recent patreons so uh, thank you julio julio i'm really sorry i butchered your name michael gulak Professor DJ and Reg Reed. So, I don't intend for this to be a regular thing, but if you do want to see more Pico stuff, then by all means let me know. Until then, bye bye.